Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome corporate comedian Greg Schwimm. Thank you. Thank you very much, Louie. Well, 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 a very good afternoon to ATC, all the vendors, all the partners. Nice to see you all here. I am very excited to be here to kick things off. I got to say, this is probably the very first corporate event that I have ever done in a children's museum with a cocktail party attached to it. So, yeah, between that and the bathroom chapel, this is like a bunch of firsts right there. Um, I cannot tell you how great it is to be here. And, uh, you know, when Louis called me and he said something that I was just so excited about, he said, and you kind of heard him talk about that, he said, this is a series of firsts and we've all been cooped up for two years and we want to have some fun because at ATC we are a fun organization. We are not afraid to laugh at ourselves. So don't be afraid to poke a little good-natured fun at ATC, who we are and the things that we do. And I said, well, that's great. Who are you and what exactly is it that you do? And he kind of mentioned it, but in case you didn't hear it, I will sum it up again. He said, quite simply, we're an independent IT consulting firm specializing in DX and four core areas, voice network, cloud, and cybersecurity. Our Delta model removes the complexities of researching, comparing, procuring, implementing, and managing next-gen IT technologies and services because by utilizing an extensive portfolio of over 400 providers, we work as a solution agnostic consultant to pair clients with technologies that deliver secure growth infrastructures. And I got to tell you, once you hear something like that, woo, the jokes just run write themselves now, don't they? <laughs> ATC, thank you so much for removing the complexities of what you do. <laughs> and there's, there's just a bunch of words in there that I've never come across. Solution agnostic? I'm still trying to figure out what the hell the metaverse is, and you throw solution agnostic at me. What in the world does that mean? Solution agnostic. Hey, what do you think about hybrid cloud? Oh, we neither believe nor disbelieve in it. <laughs> All I can tell you is ATC is much better than that solution atheist company that I came from. <laughs> see, you guys, though, see, you hear a, and you see a definition like that, and you're like this guy, right? I see a definition like that, and I'm more like this person right here. <laughs> Anyway, well, uh, isn't it great that we are all here in one room? Isn't it just feel great to be out again? Yeah, I mean, it's been too long. And you can tell that everybody in corporate America was ready to start being out again because companies, when they started returning to live events, they were really coming up with some innovative solutions to get people to feel safe. Like I did a show out in uh, San Diego in July and they had this, uh, uh, this wristband system, okay? And maybe you've seen this. The color of the wristband that you wore corresponded to how safe you felt around other people. For example, if you wore a green wristband, that meant you were pretty much open to anything. Hugs, kisses, touches, late night hookups, the whole thing, okay? <laughs> Yellow meant caution, like elbows, fist bumps, that part kind of thing. And red, if you were wearing a red wristband, that meant six feet apart, no exceptions. This system works. I know it works. My wife and I have been using it the last 25 years. So, <laughs> Also, uh, Louis did touch on uh, a big thank you to all the, uh, the partners that are here. Um, again, he went through them. I, took a look at them all. I mean, some, most of them I've heard of, you know, uh, Flexential and Spectrum, uh, Zoom. Uh, I was not familiar with that company. I had to look them up. Um, they seem like an up and comer. Zoom is like the only company that like during the pandemic achieved what I call adverb status. You now use their word, their, the name of their company as an adverb. Before the pandemic, there were only two companies in that category, Google and Uber. Think about that. On a Saturday night, you Googled a nice restaurant, and then you Ubered your way over that. That was it. But see, now, Zoom, what did you do last weekend? Oh, I Zoomed all weekend, right? So all of you other partners, now you have a goal to try and achieve. So maybe next year, I'll be up on this stage, and you say, hey, Greg, what'd you do last Saturday? Well, I ring central in my underwear. <laughs> what would we do without Zoom during the pandemic, man? All that stuff, virtual meetings, virtual school. How many of you had to homeschool your kids or had to worry about virtual school? 
I bet that sounded like something that was really fun when the pandemic began, right? You're like, oh, I've always wanted to homeschool my kids. Hey, Chloe, go get that. We're going to learn about fractions today. Go get that organically grown apple from Whole Foods and Mommy's Pampered Chef Apple Slicer. Now watch. If Mommy cuts this apple into eight pieces and you eat two of them with your delicious glass of almond milk, that leaves six sections left. That's six eighths. That's three quarters. That's fractions. Go get War and Peace. We'll read it before bath time. Ooh, Mommy, you're an awesome first grade teacher. Yeah, yeah. What were those lessons like six months later? Hey, Mommy, we can learn about fractions today? We are, Chloe. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, Mommy's Chardonnay bottle is two-thirds empty. The liquor store closes in a quarter of an hour. <laughs> you know what's the great thing about all the partners that are here is you have accolades. You don't have to, like, make up accolades for yourselves. There's a lot of companies I work for where you can tell they've kind of made up things. Like I, I was doing this one show for this startup not long ago, and he, the CEO says to me, he says, hey, Greg, a little background about our organization. You know, we were formed in the year 2020, but our employees have a combined 72 years of experience. I'm like, who the hell cares about that? What kind of weird rationale is that, you know? I would never take nine two-year-olds to an R-rated movie and go, yeah, but um, let's do the math here, huh? <laughs> You know, after the movie, I'm going to pick a few more from daycare and hit the bars. What do you think of that? <laughs> I did another show for a company. They said, hey, big news about our company, Greg. We were just put on the list of the 50 most ethical companies. And I thought, shouldn't every company be on that list? You know, what if you don't make that list? What's the alternative? It's like, hey, you guys, big announcement. We made the list of most ethical, immoral companies. <laughs> You know what we should do, right? Let's gas up the private jet and take it to that bar down the street. <laughs> Who's going to pay for that? Our customers, of course. How long have you worked here? <laughs> I wish I had that kind of stuff to brag about. But I, what was that? I've still got four minutes left, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I wish I had that kind of stuff to brag about. I don't have that, uh, uh, all that stuff on my resume. Well, let me, let me just show you. I do have some pretty cool things, OK? Uh, by the way, uh, I am a shining star on Uber, and yeah, that is a big achievement, OK? And I don't know about this, but anybody else in this room, were you invited to the return of the McRib? I don't think so. So just when I'm getting all full of myself, I'm scrolling through my Twitter feed the other day, and I come across this. Just listen to at Greg Schwem comedy with a bite. That's my CD. Very disappointed, not worth the 99 cents I paid at Goodwill. That's from Adam Loch. Yep, there's, uh, there's the little turd right there. <laughs> As you can see, apparently young Adam was out working on his short game during spelling class. <laughs> you know what's my favorite part of doing this joke? Is that kid knows I do it every single show. He finally emailed me. He goes, oh, just kidding. You have to do that all the time. Oh, let me think about it. Yes. <laughs> the internet's a dangerous two-way street, young lad. <laughs> now, here's the thing. You guys are in technology. Maybe you can explain this to me. How is it that the day after I get this tweet on my feed, I'm scrolling through LinkedIn, this comes up. Explore relevant opportunities with Goodwill Industries. I didn't have Photoshop that. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, you're some of you are probably looking at me right now going, this is probably like the weirdest audience he's ever worked for. No, no, you're not even close. I have done some really strange ones, uh, particularly in the tech sector. I did a show out in San Francisco. The whole audience was cloud computing administrators. Now, I'm sorry, but to me, that seems like the easiest job in the world, to be responsible for something that only exists in cyberspace. That sounds like a great job for a 23-year-old stoner, doesn't it? You know, hey, Jared, where are those case files from 2004? <sighs> They're all around you, man. <laughs> They're in the cloud. <laughs> then I was out in Vegas in September, and my whole show was human resource administrators. You people think your job's tough? Try doing stand-up comedy for a group who is paid to suck the fun out of everything. <laughs> 
Um, I will say, though, you know, as I said, I work all over the place, and I've worked for every type of audience. Um, I hope that at the end of this conference that you tell Louie and be honest what you thought about having humor right up front. I hope you give me a good report. If you don't, I can take it. I'm always getting rated by corporate audiences. Uh, I just did a show. In fact, I just came from a show in Orlando, and the whole audience was uh, veterinarians. And they shared with me their comments after what they wrote down after the convention was over. And I don't mean to brag, everybody, but 55 said I was outstanding, 47 said I was excellent, and 132 said I was a very good boy. So <laughs> that was a weird group, those veterinarians. Yeah, I had to, uh, uh, they put me on right after this breakout right here. How would you like to have that guy <laughs> as your vet? <laughs> you know, hey doc, my dog's been bleeding since three since three in the morning. Well, you can upload my keynote. It's going to stop. All right, all right, everybody. Well, I'll tell you what. On that note, because you, you know you put me on at the beginning, and that was my job, just to kind of get you going. And now it's time to uh, actually see what you came for. We have a lot of great keynotes here. Uh, we are going to have a break at about 3 o'clock so everybody can check their email and so forth. But for the most part, we want your eyes and your ears and your attention focused up here to hear what your partners have to say because they have put an awful lot of time into their uh, presentation. So let's start by, going, uh, by introducing your very first keynote. Uh, she's going to be talking about AI and the customer experience. She is from Ring Central. Please welcome Christine Pavlon. Come on, Christine. <laughs> 